Researchers are constantly looking for ways to improve the mobility of those with prosthetic limbs. But this next story looks at taking a whole new approach to reaching that goal by listening to what human muscles are saying. That's the sound of Ron Lapos that was a clean one. putting a little muscle behind the ball. And this is the sound Ron's muscles are making as he moves. That's right, muscles do make sounds. And those sounds are being used to power a new kind of prosthetic limb, one that Ron hopes will give him more flexibility. Um, I've had a prosthesis since the time I was about two or three. I got fitted for my first Mayo when I was about four. The Mayo, the Mayo electric arm, is powered by electrical signals given off by muscles contracting. Those signals are picked up at the skin surface. The Mayo's hard, heavy, hasn't changed much in the last 20 years. I can only do one motion. I can open and close it, and it, and it does that very well, and it's very effective. But that's really it. That's about as much as I'll ever be able to do with that hand. So um, I'm going to put this sleeve on. Yeah. Ron's now part of a new round of tests to build a better arm, research that could revolutionize the performance of artificial limbs. The new prosthesis that we've devised here at Blue Vermit Mellon is one that's based on muscle sounds as opposed to the electric signals from muscles. Dr. Tom Chow is heading the project. He's looking to create a prosthesis that behaves more like a natural limb. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hi. Oh, not too bad. Good. In the conventional prosthesis, um, partly because the sensors need to be held in place, we're, we're very restricted in terms of um, the, the control strategies. So you have to use, say, uh, one group of muscles to open the hand and another group of muscles to close the hand. It takes a concerted effort to contract a group of muscles at once to perform a single function, like opening or closing a hand. So Dr. Chow's team is looking at, or rather listening to, something else that happens when muscles contract. We're looking at what we call the muscle sound, which really is a, uh, a vibration. So the muscle is actually shaking uh, when it contracts. Jorge Silva has found a way to measure those vibrations and translate them into sound. Because we're getting sounds from all different muscles in the forearm, we don't necessarily have to tell a user, you must use your flexor groups to do this and your extensor group to do this. We can tell them, just give us a contraction that you can repeat, and we can assign it to one task, and give us another contraction that you can repeat, and we can assign it to a different task. So it's much more natural for the user. Right now, Ron's signals are being recorded as he opens and closes a prosthetic hand. He repeats the test 20 times in order to establish a pattern of muscle sounds for each task, opening and closing. The patterns for each of those tasks are then programmed into a computer chip, and that chip will be embedded into the prosthetic arm. The muscle sound prosthesis can be completely uh, individualized, uh, very much customized to the individual's type of contractions or combinations of contractions that the user wants to use. Um, to operate their prosthesis. Can you put it on? Muscle vibrations travel the length of the limb that people have, so sensors can be placed anywhere along it. Couple that with a softer material that rolls on like a sock, and it makes for a much more comfortable prosthetic. Because the device can pick up movements of individual muscles rather than clusters of them, Dr. Chow foresees a prosthetic that'll do what a natural limb does. Uh, with the muscle sound prosthesis, uh, we can open up the door to the control of multiple fingers, um, possibly the control of um, different grasps. So I think with muscle sounds, we're really opening the door to increase the functionality of the current prosthesis, not, not by an incremental step, but an enormous step. There are still bugs to iron out, like time delays. To give you an idea, and I'm going to try and close it now. There. But once those are done, Ron can take it home. He'll use it for a number of weeks and give the researchers feedback on how it's working. But even now, he's excited by the promise this hand holds. It's, it's pretty neat. It's, it's, really, it's the first really groundbreaking thing that has come along during my lifetime. The muscle sounds offer a possibility for something significantly better than what I'm working with now. And I'm really hopeful that it'll work out.